it's the last days and the earth's gotta go that's why me and my whole boy are down in a hole but you're upstairs you're just watching tv you never give a thought about world war three but it's time to carmen gives them no slack so keep it in your chair because we'll be right back chill it Dig it. Welcome to Time 2. From Genesis to Revelation, the Bible is filled with prophecies. 25% of the books of the Bible are prophetic in nature. You know, with the events unfolding in Russia and the Mideast and Israel, it's prompted us to realize that we are living in the end times. Today's show is going to open up our eyes to God's time clock for man. Our special guest today is Brian Duncan. We're going to learn how to live life in the last days. Don't miss it. <laughs> It's a blast, though. You have to try it before you realize how fun it is. It's time to break the status quo. Here we go. We're living in the lastest of the last days. That's mainly what the sport's all about, is doing your best and getting it done. I am absolutely responsible. If something goes wrong, you have to take care of it. It's not a doom and gloom uh, a term at all. It has the most simple connotation, and that is this. Thank God it's Friday. As one of the founding members of the group, the Sweet Comfort Band, this man I'm about to introduce to you was instrumental in establishing the sound of contemporary Christian music for the next decade. He's been on his own now for seven years and has a very powerful influence on the young of our nation. He's here, he's exciting, he's just a little bit crazy, but that's what makes him exciting. Would you please welcome to Time 2, Brian Duncan.
Wait, wait, listen. I think I hear him coming. That's him, all right. I'd recognize the sound of those footsteps anywhere. Sounds like he's wearing penny loafers. Oh, always, always. He always wears penny loafers. Wingtips. What kind of messiah wears wingtips? He wears penny loafers, the shoe of the common man. Yes. And he's coming. Oh, I can't wait. He is so handsome. And debonair. He's a perfect gentleman. He's a crafty businessman. He loves aerobics. He kisses babies and small oh. children. Oh, he dresses impeccably. And he never gets angry. He loves cats. But he is a gifted speech maker. A silver-tongued orator. He... He's an all-around swell guy. Never offended a soul. He, he eats healthy. He's wealthy. He's yes. wise. What is that? It, it looks like there's some man riding a, a white horse through a hole in the clouds. Who are all those other people? They're saying something. It, it sounds like they're saying... Jesus. Well, that's rather self-indulgent. Positively unrestrained. <laughs> Completely bad. A real messiah wouldn't need a self-glorifying circus like that. Ours doesn't. Of course not. He's a perfect gentleman. Boy, he's a man of quality upbringing. A mother's dream come he's true. He's a political genius. He's... he's... Hello, my friends. A sock puppet! Yes. A regal sock puppet! A handsome, manly sock puppet! The savior of the yes, world! The chosen one! <laughs> world peace! Recycle! Oh, yes! Yes, 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 yes! Choose life! Just do it! Life short! Play hard! Bravo! Just for the taste of it! Yes! Sometimes you gotta break the rules! Yes! Think green! You deserve a break today. <gasps> Gotta have it. Uh... Time to. I remember an old Andre Crouch song from years ago. It said, It won't be long, we'll be leaving here. It won't be long, we'll be going home. It is true that we won't be here much longer. Uh, occasionally I hear someone say, Perhaps we are entering the last days, or we have just entered the last days, and the truth of the matter is, we're running out of last days. We often hear about the end of time, doomsday, but what really is the final hour? Joel chapter 2, 1 Timothy chapter 4, Zechariah chapter 14, that is called the last days. It is the period of time that precedes the visible return of Jesus. This time of the end, or the Friday of the church, comes when the nation of Israel has been restored. According to the Bible, the next step is the Russian invasion of Israel. Because of Israel's massive ability to produce food and cattle, which they are doing, it's now become not just prophetic, it's become possible. Over the past uh, 45 years, uh, we have had just masses of prophecies enter into the process of fulfillment. When Israel comes back, and officially locates in Jerusalem, then the times of the Gentiles will be fulfilled. We have seen that in our generation. Never has there been so much prophecy being directly fulfilled as there is right now. Now that makes this the greatest Bible day the world has ever known. We must not be ignorant of God's plan for the last days. Scripture gives specific indications for the earth's final hour and Christ's second coming. But when will the church be taken away, or as we like to say, rapture? Every sign in the Bible points to the second coming. There is no sign for the rapture. That's why we call it imminent. It can happen at any time. So, if you think the coming of the Lord is close, it's seven years closer than you think. The catching way of the church does come before that seven-year period we call tribulation because the bride won't take a beating the night before the wedding. It is a period of God pouring out His wrath upon the earth. Revelation 3.10 says, Because you've kept the word of my patience, I'll keep you from. The Greek there is out of. The hour of temptation. That heading, second coming, is a covering that takes in both events. One event, Jesus does not come down to the earth. He only appears in the air above this earth and shouts, come up here. The other half of the second coming, all of the saints are coming back to the earth with him.
Yo, 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 check it out. Welcome to Days of Fear. I'm Ulysses. I'm Odysseus. Today we're gonna be talking about living like there's no tomorrow. Cause most likely there won't be. Check it. Yo, you got earthquakes, we got war, we got coffee prices going way up. Yo, you got the defense budget going way down, know what I'm saying? Gee, there's so much to be afraid of. Yeah, you best be shaking and palpitating straight up. And we don't have to be afraid. Christ taught us that perfect love, God's love, eliminates all fear. Yo, where you going, man? We got something to say with magnitude. Tell him, G. Yo, it's like this. When a bomb drops, you're going to be French. Toes, French. Toes, French. Toes. Boom. Pass, sir. I heard that. Psalm 46 tells us that God is our strength and He's our refuge in our time of trouble. Yo, check it out. It's like this. Bada boom, bada bam, bada bing, rat a tat tat, bing bang, bam, bam, boom. You got a grillin', G. That's right, you better dig yourself a hole, line it with lead, and get ready for the apocalypse. Boom, save's coming, boy. There ain't no hope. That's right. Ram a lam a ding dong. Boom. This same chapter tells us that you don't have to be afraid anymore. Even if the mountains should fall into the sea, God is still with you. And you don't have to face the insanity of this world all alone. Yo, don't you know when you ought to be afraid? World's coming to an end. You scared? Man, I'm scared. I'm stupid scared. I'm stupid scared. Don't. I'm stupid scared. Don't hike with a fresh lemon twist. See, I am fear itself. You scaring me? I'm scared myself. Ah! Ah! Psalm 34 tells us that I sought the Lord and He delivered me from all my fears. It's that simple. Yo, we ain't finished. Yo, check this out, man. What's my home slice got that we ain't got? Answers. Now, the book of Isaiah tells us in chapter 12, verse 2, Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust in Him and I will not be afraid. There are many who are antichrist, but the scripture speaks of one who will raise up in power during this tribulation period. The antichrist cannot ride until the bride flies. The antichrist is a man. He will be Satan's finest agent. Someone is going to attempt to assassinate this man. We don't know how. They may shoot him, stab him. But what we do know is that CNN is going to play hundreds of times worldwide his self-healing. Man is going to begin to breathe in many languages and many tongues worldwide. This is not a man, this is a God. But he will follow all of his predecessors who have failed to succeed and like them he becomes an utter failure as well. In stark contrast to the Antichrist's failure, God's plan for redemption will succeed, even in the tribulation. Throughout history, anti-Semitism has also prevailed, and still they have been preserved for a very special purpose. Before the rapture, God's servants and God's people are used to preach the gospel. But in the tribulation, there's a different thing altogether. Once we're gone, what does God do? raises up 144,000 unmarried Jewish men. They're the first ones to be saved at the very onset of that period of time we call the tribulation. As servants of God, they have the assignment then of carrying on where we have left off. Near the end of this global evangelism, and just prior to the second coming, there will be a war to end all wars, the Battle of Armageddon. This period of time, is going to make World War II look like a picnic with Nanny on a Sunday evening. On that day, Jesus will take over all of the governments of the world. Jesus is going to come on the Mount of Olives in the Battle of Armageddon. The Bible declares the Mount of Olives is going to be split. He's going to walk down through the valley to the Eastern Gate, Ezekiel 44. The Eastern Gate is going to be separated, blown apart. It's been closed. He's going to go through the Eastern Gate, go to the temple, lift his hands. The Jews are going to see the hands of them, of him whom they have pierced. And they're going to be saved in a day, according to Romans chapter 11. On that day, the first day of his thousand year reign of peace and righteousness will also begin.
we've heard a lot of things today that could have us somewhat concerned about our future. Well, what do we do if we want to buy a house, if Jesus is coming back in uh, just a few short years or maybe a few months? Why even get into all this? Why go to school? Why go to college? Why prepare? Why have a savings account? Why prepare for your future and, and retirement? How should we approach this? What, what type of people should we be? How, how should we view this? You know, the Apostle Peter had the same question. Listen to this in uh, 2 Peter chapter 3. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief. The heavens will disappear with a roar. The elements will be destroyed by fire. And the earth and everything in it will be laid bare. Since everything will be destroyed in this way, what kind of people ought you to be? Good question. He says, you ought to live holy and godly lives as you look forward to the day of God and speeding its coming. You know, what's that mean, live holy? How should we approach our future and what should we do today? What is he looking for us to do? What kind of frame of mind should we be in? Now, Jesus warns us about how to prepare for his coming. Luke chapter 12 says this, the Lord answered, Who then is the faithful and wise servant or manager whom the master puts in charge of his servants to give them their food allowance at the proper time? Listen to this. It will be good for that servant whom the master finds doing so when he returns. Here's what the Lord's looking for us. Here's the manner of people that we should be. When the Lord returns, we are to be doing whatever God's will is for our lives. If you're in school and you are preparing for a future in evangelism, don't leave school. Prepare, because when Jesus comes back, he's going to look to see who's been faithful. If you're preparing for your retirement, if you are being a good steward with that which God has entrusted you with, continue to be a good steward. Because when Jesus comes back, he's going to look to see who is doing his will here on this earth. And then you and I will be ready for Jesus when he returns. We have to live as if Jesus could come at any moment. And it affects marriage, it affects parenting, it affects business. Uh, God's looking for a different breed of people who can, whose word can actually be trusted. God's given us this, this real privilege to be his people. And I think it's important that we, we take advantage of it. Watch and pray that you may be accounted worthy. We are the vehicle to take the good news to people around us. And so what do we do? We do what the Savior said in Luke 19, 13, occupy till I come. It is important to be able to share our faith all the time. Right now, we the church, the body of Christ, every believer is the vehicle that God is using for the spreading of the gospel. Our position in the heavenly kingdom is going to be dependent upon what we did right here. Don't let what I can't do keep me from doing the things that I can and ought to do with God's help. We need people who will take a stand. We need high school kids who will stand up and, and say, no, wait a minute, I'm going to live for Jesus. Well, we have learned a few things here today. The first thing is that no man does know the time or the day or the hour, but we are aware of the season that we're in. And one thing that I know for sure, Maranatha, and that means the Lord is coming. God bless you, everybody. Thank you for showing up on time two.